we look at the dictionary, there's two definitions for contemporary. They're a little bit the same, a little bit different. The first one is about being from the same time period, from coexistent in time. And the other one is about modern stuff. We're gonna forget all the modern stuff. We're gonna talk about documentation that captures the moment in history and does not update. Most of you know who I am, so I won't give the full, full description of me. But I've been working in fast-growing startups as a freelancer and as a consultant. And there's one thing that I've learned in all of those things, and that is that teams change. People in Helsinki, raise your hand if you're working in a project that you've been working for more than two years and there has been no new people, and nobody has left. There's nobody raising hands, and that's the reality. Whether it's a fast-growing startup, people come and go, whether it's a consulting project, the people in the project team might change, or even the partner for the client might change. It might be an internal project, then you hire one team, then a couple of years later, you hire some other company to continue. And if there's one thing that we can learn from that, it is that silent knowledge is useless. The things that, oh, I know that Pekka knows about this one. He wrote it two years ago. And then you realize that Pekka is not in the company anymore. So it's useless. We need to document things for the future us, for the future teammates, and for anybody ever touching the code base in the future. I believe that most of the listeners are kind of well-versed in documentation, but I just want to highlight that documentation should provide context. We have some kind of documentation that needs to deal with facts. I don't want my API reference to be just about motivation. I want to know how the endpoint works and not just why it exists. But for many of the documentation, we also want to capture the why. What was the context of these things? Why did something change? Why did we build things? Because just looking at the code, we cannot figure everything out. We can figure out from the code what it does and how it works. Not always though, but we can never figure out why it exists. So we need to uh, provide the context as part of the documentation. And most of the documentation we write is a living organism, something that we want to be up to date. I've definitely had a situation where I use a library and I look some documentation and it's outdated. The functions don't exist. And I'm like, I have no idea what to do now. Then you try to look at the code and figure out how to use it. But we have a problem with code that with documentation that is up to date. And it is that we lose history. We have version control, but nobody's gonna look at the diffs of readmes and figure out what was changed. We look at diffs to see what changed in the code, but nobody's gonna read multiple diffs to see what changed in docs. And for my idea of contemporary documentation, we have three branches 
using in your project, you should. And the last one is the issues, stories, tasks. I affectionately call them Giga Tickets. I have a little bit of Nintendo syndrome. You know, like back in early 90s, everything to do with video games was Nintendo. Late 1990s, everything was PlayStation. For me, everything is a Jira ticket. But you get the idea. Something where you write down the features, the tasks, bug reports, whatever you use to keep up with the things. So these are the three main branches that I suggest that we use as a documentation that captures the history, the context, and never changes. One of the reasons why we're not super good at this is that it's psychologically difficult because the reward comes much later. And most often, you are not the one who benefits from the documentation that you wrote. It's often somebody else. Maybe you have even left the project. So getting into the mindset of focusing on this is going to be a challenge. How many of you feel that you write good commit messages? Like, I do sometimes. But sometimes this happens. And you write, you start, maybe the project, or you start the day, or the week, and you're really good and pedantic about writing good commit messages. And then the day goes past, you get a little bit tired, maybe the product owner is demanding, like, we needed to release this today, just put it in, and then you write something like this. I'm definitely guilty of this, and especially when I was much more junior in my career, I didn't always know what to write in the comment messages. Sometimes I wrote jokes and memes. I've tried to stop that. But that's definitely something I did when I started programming. What I want you to think when you write in the comment message is that what would you like to know from two years from now? We quite often think of commit messages as quite a short term life cycle. Maybe until the code review and then we're done. I know some projects and some developers who like to go through commit messages and use it in a long term thing. But the commit message can work as a documentation with the life cycle of the project. And you can rephrase the thinking as what would you like to ask from the colleague who worked on this code two years ago. We take a lot of things granted because we've spent a day or a couple of days thinking about the problem. We know it inside and out. But a couple of years goes past. You will not remember what was obvious back then. And most likely, you're not working on that project. This is something that happens all the time. Almost all the developers I talk about this with, they mention that, yeah, I was in this project last year, and there was this case, the original developer had left, I had nobody to ask, and we just had to figure things out. This is from Chris Beam's website, he has this like, seven best practices for commit messages, I don't agree with all of them, I think some of them are way too strict, but I kind of like this template, you don't have to read all of it, but it basically says, what kind of things you should write. You have a headline that summarizes the changes. Luckily we're developers and not working in the media industry. We don't need to use clickbait on the headings. We can actually tell what we did. And then we have all the space in the world to write more context. Storage is cheap, text compresses nicely, so you can write everything you have in your mind into the body. Was there a trade-off, a compromise, a selection of library or selection of doing something? Write down what you were thinking, what was discussed, why did you make this decision? Like with all documentation, all of these things can live a little bit in different places. Some of them fit multiple places. But commit messages are great because they contain the information of the changes themselves and then the context. And you can reference issues in multiple
his examples, but reviewing his pull requests is so nice because there might be like 10 comments being like, this is important, this relates to that, this was done like this because code reviews shouldn't be and they don't need to be judgmental. It's not you submitting something to the jury and then them bashing you and kind of trying to find what you made wrong. It's a great platform to learn, share knowledge, touch some issues, have discussions. Couple of points. Write everything down. Many people, many projects do code reviews asynchronously. You post a pull request, people comment, you have discussion in GitHub, and then you merge. But also quite often, we pick up the coworker, sit down with them, walk through the code, maybe test things out, and then they post, oh, let's get this merch, looks good. You should write down the things that you discussed with the colleague, because the things that you discuss is silent knowledge. In two years, you won't remember what you talked, and most likely, you won't be in the project anymore. So write it down. 
manufacturing. Maybe you write the test later. You can always go back to the issue and look at what was the bug to make sure that you don't reintroduce it into the code base. If it's just importer breaks, you have no idea if you reintroduce it or not. The third point is less about the documentation for future, but I wanted to add it anyway. I would like to have some kind of definition of done in the tickets, because quite often you do something, you make assumptions based on the ticket, then it's time for like review, and suddenly there comes like 10 different things. Oh, this is supposed to do this. It's supposed to work like this. That and that and that. And it should be done today. So it just saves a lot of stress. And clarifying questions. Just like in the code review, write down the things that you're figuring about. Why are we doing this? What is the timeline? How important is this? How many people it's affecting? Anything that you need to know as a developer to understand the problem. Quite often, this happens face to face. You maybe go to the PO, you go to the business expert, you have a quick chat, write it down. Because when you have discussions with people, you won't remember it. Two years later, you're probably not working on the project. So write it down. Then I want to show a little bit of, of like a workflow example. Don't mind the code. Don't mind the, the documentation part of it. This is just an example of the workflow. How to use this as a documentation when it's done well. So here I am. I'm a front-end developer. I run into this code and the function for some looks a bit weird. Maybe it's fifth-dimensional data from outer space, and we need something else. And somebody wrote this. Luckily, they made a comment about using the Flumpa method, which I came up with. But you're here, and you want to know kind of what? What were they thinking? What is this? Why does this happen? You can have plugins in your editors that allow you to show the history in line or in the toolbar, or you can jump onto the command line, find the right line, and find the commit ID. And as you can see from the timestamps, I did this wonderful example in the middle of the night. But now I have the ID for the commit. I go to GitHub, I go to the repository, and I search with that ID. It takes me to the commit. And in GitHub, it will show you which pull request did this commit come with. So we know that it's the, the third pull request, and if we click at it, we get into the pull request. So we can get from the code with a couple of clicks into the pull request, see the code review, and we can also see the issue because it's recorded in either the commit message or in the pull request. If we click that, we get into the issue, and we can read all the comments, all the background. Like I said, this is a workflow example. Don't write tickets like this. But once you get comfortable and kind of get this workflow onto your daily life, it's gonna make it so much easier to find things out. I think there's a couple of reasons why in many projects this doesn't exist. One is that people don't think of commit messages, PRs, issues as documentation. And probably more often, they are not helpful enough. They're not written good enough to provide any value. So then you end up trying to figure things out by yourself. Let's recap. Commit messages, code review, tasks and issues are a great way to build contemporary documentation. Something that captures the moment and the context without losing the history without updating. Think about the future, where the world has changed, the teams have changed, the people are not there. Anything that's obvious when you're writing things will not be obvious in the future. And lastly, write it down. You won't remember it, you won't be there, so be a good teammate and write it down. 
doing open source development in which again got started last fall and now I'm starting a new season. I will be building 